All right, I think we're live. Welcome to uh, cloudy, gray New England. I don't know if you can see how high the water is in the background. Let me see. No, I'm not going to flip around. It's uh, 56 degrees is the temperature reads. This is going to be a record for February. February 28th, 56 degrees here in New England. And... Uh, the North Shore. And tonight it's going to be in the 20s. 22, I think. 56 to 22, all in the span of a few hours. Something's going on. Something's wicked bizarre. All right, I want to talk about, uh, I don't know if you've seen the news yesterday. It's all over the place. When I say that, I mean Twitter. <laughs> but the, uh, what was the article? I'll, I, I'll link it below. And if you're just joining, welcome to the class war. Welcome to the struggle. I am Rob. I go live every weekday, five days a week. It would mean the world to me. It's free for you to hit subscribe. Uh, and when you hit subscribe, hit the little notification bell. Because I can't guarantee what time I'm going to go live. I can just guarantee. I'll give you my word that it's five days a week. So if you hit the little notification bell, then guess what? When I go live, you'll get notified. And uh, to all the new subscribers, thank you so much. Keep getting new subscribers and you just, yeah. I'm forever grateful. I'm humbled, honored to be among your ranks. Uh, I'm doing everything I can to make this YouTube thing happen. So really trying to treat this like, you know, it's my job because that's what I want it to be, right? Don't they say dress for success? I don't think I'm dressed for success, but I, I believe in the act, act for success. And that's what I'm trying to do. I would like to go live seven days a week. I wish I had like a studio that I could go live from. Um, but for all the new subs, thank you so much. I re it means the world to me. It really does. I, I can't, it's hard to articulate how, how much it means for the new subscribers to be joining and to build this community. For those of you getting in on the ground floor, it's rad, man. Because uh, there's a lot of things we need to talk about in the class, class struggle, in the class war. And today, Wendy's, we are going to discuss what they always say. You might have heard them say, uh, capitalism breeds innovation, which might be somewhat true. Unfortunately, that innovation never is for the workers, never to the benefit of the working class, never to the benefit of society in general. Uh, and this is a prime example. It's really infuriating. And if you eat out of fast food, if you use any place, I just, this is a warning, okay? What Wendy's is about to do next year is going to set a trend among all capitalist com companies in America. They're all going to see this and they're all going to start using, start implementing this quote unquote dynamic pricing. That's what it's called. Really, it's price gouging. It's a... It's a not so subtle way of saying we're price gouging you. That's what we're doing. That's what Wendy's is going to try. And they're investing $20 million into their menus to be able to price gouge people waiting in line, customers. Really, capitalism breeds innovation. And here it is, folks. Here's the innovation. Great. So they can price gouge us without, you know, <laughs> with the algorithms. But just wait. I mean, I think Amazon already kind of does this. And I believe there's a few cases in the EU that are against Amazon. Welcome if you're just joining. We're going to talk about Wendy's dynamic pricing, as they call it. It's not really dynamic pricing. It's price gouging. Like, sub, comment. Thank you, Apple Thought. And to all the new subs, got a ton of new subscribers lately. Thank you so much. You're making my YouTube dreams come true. feel like we should queue up Kahala and Oats. What is that song called? Dreams come true? Anyways. Cue up some Hall and Oats. I wish I had a studio so I could do that. <laughs> um, so the article that I will link below, I don't think I get to link it because I was kind of doing this on the fly. It says Wendy's will spend $20 million on digital menus to implement their dynamic pricing. Jesus. Their price gouging. You, this is how you know the media is owned by other corporations that are like, hmm, I wonder if we could do that. Wait until the cable companies figure out how to do that. We used to have pay-per-view. Wait until they figure out that, like, you know, I don't know if American Idol is still a thing. 
Wait till I figure out like, oh, everybody likes American Idol. Your cable bill is going to go up if you watch that at that time because a million, the Super Bowl. Wait till they can figure out how to do this. With the, I mean, I'm not kidding. Walmart's going to implement this. Everybody, if if Wendy's turns a bigger profit than they already have, and they will, and we'll get into it. I have my notes. Um, this is going to catch like wildfire. This is going to be the new plague of capitalist civilization. Everybody's going to be doing dynamic pricing. Did I catch a niner in there? Row ads. Uh, it's just a fancy way to say price gouging. Wendy's is going to be price gouging, folks. Get prepared. And I don't go to Wendy's hardly ever, but I certainly won't go now. And the most infuriating thing, so on their earnings call, when this dynamic pricing, uh, price, I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it price gouging. When this price gouging was an, announced, it was by Kirk Tanner. Oh, that's a CEO name if I've ever heard one. Kirk Tanner. Can you guess what color Kirk is? Yeah, he's Caucasian. Um, Kurt, on the earnings call yesterday or whenever, uh, announced that they're going to be investing $20 million, not into the workers who are struggling to get by, not into the people. Ample thought, dynamic pricing equals you're going to buy it anyways, you meat puppets. Well, that's the thing. So before I get into Kirk Tanner, the article talks about how price gouging already happens with Uber and the ride shares. Okay. So if you ever try to catch, if, if you look up like to book a, a, a ride, like early afternoon, right? You're going to get probably the best price. And if you try to book that same ride at rush hour, they price gouge and they say, oh, it's harder to get a ride. More people need it. So we got to charge more. They don't. Um, they don't have to charge you more. <laughs> they really don't. Um, but they do, and they make a shitload of money, and none of that goes to the people doing the work. It goes to the CEOs. Just look up the uh, CEOs of uh, Uber and Lyft and see how much they make, and then look up how much the workers make. Uh, and you wonder why all the ride shares are going on strike. So, so they were saying... The idea came from like, oh, ride shares already do this. They price gouge at certain times, at rush times. And now Kirk Tanner said, ooh, capitalism breeds. He sounds like he was the mayonnaise on, on the dolly on Full House, Ample Todd. He does it. He sounds like a character on Full House. Old Uncle Kirk Tanner's going to come over because he owns this San Francisco house that we, we, we rent for $2 billion. Kirk Tanner obviously was like, well, capitalism breeds innovation. And what's more innovative than just stealing something from another industry so we can exploit the masses? Um, this is the kind of innovation that is, capitalism is breeding. Again, who does this benefit? Does this benefit the society? I wonder if Kirk Tanner, in his earnings call, said how this is going to benefit the local economies. He didn't, just so you know. He said, hey, shareholders, your dividends are going to get fatter. Uh, so, and if you're wondering, you can read the full earnings report on LinkedIn. I went and looked it up. I read it. It's insufferable. The, like the wealth that these people have. And they're like, you know, I do own one yacht and six houses and acres of land. But I would like to own two yachts. How can we make that happen? Oh, price gouging. That's how. These people are not struggling to get survive. The, you know, the grandkids have it set up for them. But still, they need, I mean, that's what capitalism needs. It needs profit. Uh, it needs more profit. That's like when people are like, oh, you know, businesses are here to like, you know, invest in jobs and workers. No, capitalism just needs more profits. Go on these earnings calls. These earnings calls, they just want to make more profits the next quarter. They're not talking about how they're going to help the communities, how things are going to get back. And I read, I read the earnings report. You can too. Go to LinkedIn. Kirk Tanner. It's spelt just like it sounds. Like mayonnaise. Like Ample Thought said. <laughs> Kirk Tanner worked at Pepsi for 31 years. And Procter & Gamble for a year before that. What a resume. I bet his parents were somebody high up. Uh, so... And the earnings call, he basically said, like, you know how we're going to give our shareholders even more money? The people who already get residual residuals or uh, passive income, 
for people that aren't, you know, struggling to put food on the table. Do you know how we're going to do dynamic pricing where we're going to invest 20 million, again, not to the workers, but to the menus where the menu items prices, the menu item prices will change in real time with the demand. So if you go and wait in line, and I apply this to everything, Walmart, Starbucks, Wendy's, McDonald's, they're all gonna do this, okay? Don't think this isn't gonna happen. If Uber and Lyft have already done it and it works, everybody's gonna do it and we're all effed. The end of society is coming, so join the class war, hit subscribe. I go live five days a week. It means the world to me if you subscribe. And we need this information to be spread. So share this with your friends, tell them about it, bring them to the live stream, give me your thoughts, leave a comment. Um, but you know, the only way this stuff stops or we can combat it or we can bring awareness and somehow not have our society, you know, just be so exploitative uh, is understanding what's going on. So Kirk Tanner's, you know, announced to his shareholders, he doesn't care about customers or workers, that they're gonna invest that 20 million on these, on these uh, digital menus. Which is funny because I'm pretty sure Wendy's workers aren't doing the best and that 20 million could have really like helped the communities the local economies remember your local economy uh 70 of that is made up of consumer purchasing power so you and i having money so we can reinvest in the communities when they do ish like this and they pay it to shareholders and dividends or passive income or to ceos in inflated salaries and benefit packages which means stock options which then they buy back their stocks to inflate their wealth even more and then usually they do something stupid and get fired and have a golden parachute but when they do that there those people kirk manner isn't shopping at my grocery store he ain't shopping at yours either he probably has some Illuminati underground bunker grocery store where they grow stuff in the ground upside down and he picks it himself. And there's probably like a leprechaun and a unicorn there, like unicorn meat, like stuff we've never even seen, okay? Kirk Tanner isn't reinvesting in our communities and that's the only way like we can flourish, that people can buy homes, can do things, local businesses don't have to die every week. We can reinvest in the malls. Nah, malls aren't that great. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Wendy's uh, earnings report. So they opened up 250 new restaurants. They've had restaurant growth in the US, US at 7.2%. This is Wendy's, man. Don't crap on leprechauns. I'm not. I'm saying like those are probably like the, the greeters when ample thought. When you like when you walk into Walmart, there's usually an old person who can't afford to retire. So they have to work and they greet you leprechauns at this illuminati grocery store it's probably like holy foods or something and jeff bezos probably owns it the leprechauns are the greatest they're like welcome to the end of the rainbow here's a pot of gold um so wendy's had 7.2 percent growth in the u.s 16 percent internationally and i don't understand this 8.4 percent globally international isn't that global i mean the earnings report is stupid now for Wendy's net profit, okay? Good afternoon from Lakeland, Florida. What up, Kevin Hawthorne? What is going on, my man? Good to have you. Welcome to the class four. If you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. I go live five days a week, weekdays, and uh, I can't guarantee what time, so I tell people, hit the notification bell, and it will notify you when I go live. And if you're just joining us, we're talking about Wendy's price gouging which they've disguised it again remember george carlin said listen to the language the language they use is important wendy's has called this dynamic pricing they're gonna on the earnings call yesterday kirk tanner the ceo said we're going to invest 20 million not into our workers not into the local communities into buying new digital menus that can change the item prices in real time on demand and so what I was saying earlier is I mean, every Walmart, Wendy's, Starbucks, McDonald's, they're all going to do this. So imagine standing in line and you're going to buy a cheeseburger. But the three people in front of you buy a cheeseburger, right? By the time it gets to the second person, the cheeseburger, let's say, was $4, right? And that's probably cheapest. Let's say cheeseburger is like $5, right? First person buys it. It's $5. Second person buys it. They go, oh, it's going to be $5.50. We have a high demand for those right now. The third person that buys it, it's going to be $6. And by the time you get to the register, that cheeseburger could be $6.57 $7 because of dynamic pricing, the price gouging. 
Notice that none of the workers who will probably be understaffed and underpaid and overworked, that, price, that surge pricing, that price gouging isn't going to be reinvested in them so they can go spend it in lo the local economy and keep, our, keep rents going and buy a home or go to college, get higher education. None of that money is going to go to them. And I know that because Kirk Tanner, the CEO, said on the call to investors and to his shareholders that this is how we're going to make more profits because capitalism can never be satiated. Okay, this is why I call this the class war because you need to wake up to this stuff. There is no satiation in capitalism. If your business isn't making profit, your business dies. What does capitalist businesses need to survive? More and more profit. So they need to, capitalism breeds innovation, but really it's just ripping off uh, what Uber and Lyft, the ride shares do right now is price gouging at high demand times. And that's what they're gonna do. And I'm guaranteeing you Walmart, McDonald's, Starbucks, Target, Kohl's, I don't know, liquor stores, Amazon, I think Amazon's already doing it, but they are all going to do this. This is going to be our future if we don't stand up and say, enough, no way, you know, boycott them. I'm not going to, I'll never go to Wendy's again. After Kirk Tanner announced this, first of all, I hate his name. Reminds me of Kirk Cameron, and that guy's a, a douchebagalo. Um, so is Rob Schneider, irony. Um, so, Let's go back into the Wendy's earnings call and you can read Kirk Tanner's Wendy's earnings call on Kirk Tanner's LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, go get it. Because these, these capitalists that love to talk about how they're going to exploit us as consumers even more, do it right out in the open. This is not hidden. This is not secret. This isn't part of their Illuminati thing. Uh, this is like their business plan. They don't care about workers. I mean, back in like the 70s, 80s, it used to be the customer was always right. And then in the 90s to the early aughts, they started saying like, oh, it's our employees that are the heart of the company. Now they're flat out saying like, hey, shareholders, this is how we're gonna get you more money, okay? And I'm not talking about the Wall Street bets Reddit shareholders. I'm talking about the shareholders, the corporations that are holding hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of shares that really bring in the money when their shares go up, when they artificially inflate them with news. By the way, I want to give a shout out. If you're on TikTok, go check out the TikTok account, cancel this clothing line, cancel this clothing company. The dude is brilliant. It's it's one dude, it, when I first saw it, I was like, is this like a guy trying to, I, I didn't understand it. That's all I watch now. This guy breaks down the class war like you've never heard. This guy breaks down who owns what companies, how really there's only a few banks in America, how really like, you know, the banks are running everything it's amazing kirk tanner from ample thought the yoga instructor at your wife's all-female retreat <laughs> unfortunately i've seen kirk tanner's photo and trust me he ain't a yoga instructor he might be a yogurt eater this is the dude kirk tanner is the guy that has a yogurt for lunch and likes to tell you all about how it makes his irregularity go away that's who kirk tanner is f you kurt kirk kirk sorry kurt i, I, I don't care no we won't call him kurt the legendary Kurt Cobain will not be associated with Kirk. Kirk. So we're, let's go back to the Wendy's earnings call, okay? Uh, their growth, they've opened 250 stores. I don't understand what the difference between international and global is. Internationally, they've grown 16%, globally, 8.4%. And I would like to think that if you're international, you're global at the same time. Right? Right, Kirk? Maybe that's just fancy management talk. I don't know. I ain't no manager. I ain't got that kind of bachelor's degree like Kirk. But uh, there's some other things that are concerning with Wendy's, and I didn't get to dive too deep, and I don't have my notepad, uh, my digital notepad. I didn't invest $20 million into it like Wendy's is going to do with their digital menus. Uh, and if you work at Wendy's, yo, know, solidarity with you. You know, time to organize. Time to organize. This is the only way to fight back. I would be okay with it. No, I wouldn't be okay with this. Let me take that back. I would be more willing and receptive to hear about this if it wasn't just on an earnings call to say how much more profit we're gonna make. And if they were like, 
the people working like because most likely there's going to be one or two people working when this price gouging goes on so they can reap the most profit but if some of that dough is like going directly because they they have the technology where they know who's working during those hectic shifts they know how many people are working they they could you know obviously give them some of that profit profit sharing and it's never going to happen you know kirk tanner made that clear dick um but wendy's got into some heat because i guess they're not a part of the fair food program which was uh which they were getting a lot of backlash because they say without being part of that program to i guess certify that they're doing things on the up and up uh they were saying a lot of the farms that they're sourcing their stuff from were were claimed to be like modern day slavery farms because you could just call it a plantation and listen we see this all everywhere because again Capitalist companies need to make the most profit every quarter. They can't lose, and they have to beat Wall Street's expectations, or I don't know what happens, nothing happens. Wall Street's expectations, remember what expectations are, they're just resentments under construction. So you're never gonna satisfy Wall Street, right? Never, ever. They crashed our economy how many times? But we see this with so many companies because they can exploit workers that don't have the protections u.s workers have in other countries that like starbucks they were caught they they self-police themselves with this cafe model or lots cafe model i don't know it stands for something and it's stupid but they were like we self-certify that we promise we're paying people fair wages and i always thought like yo Starbucks, you don't pay people fair wages in America. Look at the union organizing effort in America to say like, hey, you're messing with workers here. What makes you think in, a, in another country that doesn't have the NLRB or workers protections? And we're not talking about like the EU where they're very protected as workers. Um, but what makes you think in other countries you're gonna be on the up and up? Because you said so, it's like the police policing the police. It just don't work out. You know what I mean? Like, of course, they're never gonna find fault. Police never go to jail for what they do. Unless, you know, it's something really horrendous. They get to do whatever they, they, that's why they call a badge a shield because it protects them from accountability. But so Starbucks was caught, you can read the report. Uh, it was Reporter Brazil, who was reporting on how at their farms, their coffee bean farms, they had like 13, 14, 50, or, or, I don't remember, I guess, don't exactly quote them, but they had young kids working there. They had people that were being exploited, that was, that they were call, calling like being trafficked and, and uh, slave labor, all these like heinous, heinous things, which I always suspected, I didn't know, but I just thought like, if, if your employees in America got beef because you're treating them bad, uh, I'd like to hear from your employees in other countries. And you know what the funny thing is, is before these stories came out about Starbucks and slave labor in Brazil, um, and that's why I say it, because Wendy's is basically being accused of the same thing, okay? They're like, you, you ain't on the up and up. You're trying to make the most money, so you're exploiting people in other countries too. And we can't have none of that. So just know when you're shopping, what you're paying for. Um, because that money, like I like to tell people when they say, oh man, the prices went up. And I say, don't worry, none of that's going to the workers. You're making some wealthy people very rich right now. Um, but like, so when, when you know, I, I forget where I was going with this, man, I'm just angry. <laughs> but, these, but, but before like, you know, this stuff came out with Starbucks, I think I was trying to go there that like, you know, there's just, there's no satiating these companies. They'll do whatever they can. Hold on, Amplify. International means USA based, including territories. Okay. Global means tertiary and affiliate sites, including distribution centers and manufacturing middlemen. Oh, so it is some management speak. Management D's, I believe they call it. Upper middle management D's. Do you speak management D's? No, I don't. I don't speak douche. <laughs> But I'm not saying you do, anyway. you probably looked that up and I appreciate you. You always bring in the facts, hardcore, in the comment section. Hey, slow that truck down, Cisco. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that story and I will link it in the description because I think this is important. This is like one of those game changing moments that you see in capitalism where they're like, thank God for capitalism breeding innovation. And we're like, is that helping the workers? Is that going to help us? Or is it just helping like the small few who already have enough? Because you would think, or at least, you know, a hundred years ago, 
Henry Ford, Kellogg, all the cornflake capitalism, like all these people thought by the time we got to where we are today that we'd be working like 15 hours a week. That because of the innovation, because of the robots, because of the technology, that like worker, like we would all be doing well and that, you know, most of the hard labor would be done by machines. But capitalism just needs to exploit. It needs to flex that power. So we're where we are. <laughs> Housing market bubble, real estate, uh, commercial real estate market bubble, uh, a homelessness epidemic, uh, food insecurity epidemic, a regular epidemic, a drug epidemic. I mean, look at all the things. Wealthiest nation in the world. And just drive down any highway. You'll see how great it is. Target, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Kohl's, liquor store, liquor store, depending where you are, gun store. <laughs> Beautiful. It's just beautiful. I'm so stressed. <sighs> so, keep an eye out, okay? Dynamic pricing. Call it what it is. Price gouging. And I mean, I think they're even taking a little note from uh, from all the grocery stores. It's funny because uh, canceled this clothing company on on TikTok, the account, which I highly suggest you please go watch this stuff. He talked about how they're saying inflation is at 3.2% right now, right? But then he broke down in that article where they were claiming inflation is only 3.2%, the inflation on each thing. So it was like uh, non-carbonated juice inflation was at 30%. Uh, he broke down all, that's the only one I really remember. Again, go watch his channel. And he broke down them all. And none of them were less than, I think, 5 or 6% inflation. And in fact, he was like, I don't know. The math doesn't make sense because if you average all these together, none of them are close to 3.2. But if you average them all together, they're like 15, 20%. And it just doesn't make sense. So again, you, we're being taken because um, nothing. I mean, chips that I buy all the time went from 250 a bag to five dollars a bit they doubled in price cape cod chips have doubled in in price it used to be two for five dollars now you'd be lucky if you find a two for seven most of the time they're like 4.98 bananas b-a-n-a-n-a-s ample thought unions are making more strides the past few years they've had or in the past two years than they've had in the past 20 years keep up keep the interest up that's true. Listen, organizing effort. And why do you think? That's why I do this class war. That's why I talk about the struggle because people don't understand how they're exploited sometimes. And our culture has just normalized. I was just talking with someone. Management loves to normalize the mistreatment of workers. And that's, you know, just pull yourself up by the bootstraps, the rugged individualism. And that's all bullshit. Okay. Because these people at the top, they don't have to deal with rugged individualism. Just look at the banks. The second they have to encounter rugged individualism, the government steps in and bails them out. Same with Wall Street. Is that happening for the people? No, it's not. Um, so yeah, that's why we see workers gaining strides. I mean, there was just news yesterday about Starbucks. They're saying, hey, we're going to start coming to the table. I think Starbucks realized, like, yo, this this organizing effort is not slowing down and they're not going to slow down and i think they had 20 or 40 stores on one day uh join uh, file a petition to unionize to have a vote and i think they're seeing the writing on the wall that like yo this ain't slowing down and until you start treating people better like this is what you're gonna have to deal with and that's why the power is with the people and that's why we need solidarity across all fronts i always say it man this ain't life left versus right those are the wings of the same bird okay they all left and right want is capitalism to progress more record profits just look at the congress people who are trading stocks and how much they're making they don't give a rip about us they don't care about clean water road street nothing okay it's up versus down the class war and whether or not you believe in it it's happening that's why I say subscribe, because I will always bring you stuff like this. I will always tell you to the best of my knowledge and try to make it entertaining, informative, and call it what it is, you know? George Carlin, God bless him. Rest in peace. Rest in power. George Carlin, I'll never forget. You know, my mom really emphasized. She would always buy me his books, make me watch his stuff. We had one of his tapes live at Jammin' from New York, or I forget what it was called. Ample Thought probably knows. But we had that on VHS. <laughs> And we wore that tape out. And now I 
teach my kids the same. I make them listen to it when they're old enough. Once they get into high school, they all have to go through his uh, discography, his stand-up albums, because, you know, Carlin had you paying attention to the language. And he said, you know, you ain't in their club. And this definitely ain't about left wing versus right wing, conservative, progressive, liberal, uh, Democrat, Republican. Those are all the same creature, okay? They're all just capitalists. And none of it is to the benefit of us. Look at what's going on around the country. From the most progressive states, Massachusetts, California, Washington, to the most restrictive states. It's all about the bottom dollar. And I, don't forget Betamax. Oh, we didn't have Betamax. <laughs> We had an Atari though, live in New York. What was the jamming one? Didn't Carlin have a jamming one? Live in New York, that's the one I think we had on VHS, but there was a jamming something. It's in my, I can't close it out, but it's in my uh, in my music, because I listen to them often in work. I put them in my playlist so I can listen. But <clears throat> Carlin, you know, paid close attention to the language they use. And you can look up his bits. He had jamming. What, was that just it? Jamming? Was that Ample Thought, what it was called? By the way, go subscribe to Ample Thought. I don't know if he's creating anything. I haven't got to check in on him, but go subscribe to his channel because he puts out good stuff too. He's a smart dude. He's a funny dude. And uh, everybody, uh, you know, for me, as long as people aren't a D or an A um, and they're creating, if you leave something in the comments or you drop, you know, something in the comments, I'll promote promote your channel i never understood that there are some big youtubers that would be like i don't want to mention them because i don't want to give any light to their channel when these people weren't being d's or a's or b's or c's <laughs> you could really be any one of those um and they were just like you know trying to get a little light shine on them and i see nothing wrong with that and you know if i ever get to the point where i'm not going to like you know give some people some love especially if they're out there grinding and creating um put me in check please and the only way i can get there is with your your help so big shout out to ample thought thank you for always bringing the heat bringing the information uh thank you to kevin hawthorne from lakeland florida lakeland is that no land of lakes i'm thinking of the butter land of lakes i kept thinking of that maybe that's where they make it anyways i gotta wrap this up so what i'm trying to say is just thank you because solidarity uh and the people having power power to the people only happens with people and i'm trying to build a community whether you agree with me or not whether you think there's a class war or not i know there's a lot of people that don't but at the end of the day i'm fighting for you when i organize i'm fighting for everybody next to me and there are some people that don't believe certain jobs should make more money and i would ask them you believe working full time you shouldn't be able to survive and they couldn't answer it and as much as that hurts me pains me and I mean like deep in my soul, it pains me that people really truly believe, a lot of them are privileged, that if you work 40 hours a week because of the type of job you work, you should have to not be able to eat food or afford gas or afford rent, which is gross, is gross to me. I think jamming in New York, back in town was not the one. Jamming in New York is the one we had VHS. Thank you Ample Thought for dropping that in the comments. So go check out George Carlin jamming in New York. That's the one like I grew up on. I was probably too young to be watching that, let's be honest, but my mom was cool. <laughs> my mom was cool. And she was from Brooklyn, and I think Carlin was from Brooklyn. I forget if he was from Brooklyn or the Bronx or Queens. I don't know, but like all them people from New York when they're like from a certain borough, like they take a lot of pride in that. Um, and no disrespect. Listen, my mom's from Brooklyn, so I'm not disrespecting. I, I got a family in Brooklyn. No, no, no disrespect, okay? I don't want to upset anyone in Brooklyn. Jesus Christ, I just don't want to do it. My family is tough as nails. I, they're scary, you know? Well, the thing is, is they're clever. i never forget. My uncle, he goes, I was eating so I was eating ice cream. And he goes, oh, man, is that ice cream going bad? He goes, you smell that? He goes, oh my God, smell that. So I was holding the ball, I go, huh? And he pushed my face down into it. And then my other cousin, I would bring friends with me. We would go to like, you know, we would go to New York every weekend when I was there, just every week and go see my mom's family. And one time when we brought a friend, and my cousin goes to him, he goes, oh man, I'm the ward inspector. You didn't, you didn't really, we were young and he was much older. 
He's like, I gotta inspect everyone's wallet before you come in here. I just gotta check it out, make sure you're not bringing anything in. So my buddy gave him his wallet and he just took it. Jesus. He was born in Manhattan. Kylan from Manhattan. Everybody gets to claim Manhattan. Kylan's story is really interesting, really. So I highly suggest watch his stuff. I have like three different books. Brain Droppings is one of the books my mom got me. Uh, I got another one that my daughter got me and I got a couple more that my wife got me. They're all about Carlin's life. I don't think he was writing books. I think they're essentially his, his philosophy, his jokes. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so uh, what I was getting at is for those who are subscribing, for those who are joining the community, I'm really grateful. I'm humbled. I'm honored to have you join because this only works with people. You know, you can't do this alone. Uh, you have to have more people who are willing to discuss things, whether we're right or wrong, just discuss it. You know, that's the key. Having a conversation, bringing it to light, not pretending like this is okay. And some people do pretend it's okay. And some people pretend that that's just the way it is. And to the just the way it is people, let me clarify. You didn't want to be saying that when slavery was happening, when the civil rights fight was happening, when women didn't have voting rights. You. I mean, maybe you did, but there were people saying that. And trust me, looking back, they were on the wrong side of history, okay? So saying it's just the way it is or it is what it is, I, I hate that. Please don't say that. Because that's the other thing about America. America is we're supposed to have the freedom to change things. We're supposed to have the power. The people are supposed to have the power to change what we disagree with, to change, you know, what we believe is uh, whatever, grievances with the government. So when you say it's just the way it is and you submit to that, you're giving them your power. You're saying, yeah, what can I do? But you got a voice, you got a body, you got other people, you got a community. That's what I'm building here with the class war, with the struggle. I'm trying to build a community of informed, old Uncle Noam Chomsky says, you want an informed public making rational decisions. And what America has is an uninformed public making irrational decisions. I'm just trying to you know, bring old Uncle Noam Chomsky's dream to life. We gotta be informed. We can have fun doing it. We make some jokes about Kirk Tanner. Kirk, if you're watching this, <laughs> GFY, buddy, GFY. Hope you slip and fall on your yogurt cup and it goes right up your patootie. What is patootie? Anyways, um, okay, so I, I gotta go. <laughs> the reason I organize this for my kids for you, for everybody. Solidarity to you if you're working, if you're in the struggle, my heart goes out to you. Uh, and I thank you for subscribing. I thank you for hitting the notification bell. I thank you for joining me on this live stream. And uh, again, oh, check out my brother, Ariel. Ah, shoot, I told him I'd give him ample thought. Do you know what my brother's YouTube channel is? <laughs> Ariel Vectors, I think it is. Uh, he does amazing drone work. He got his drone license. And if you want to see Florida like you've never seen before, go check out his channel. I'll link that in the description too. And check out Ampathot's channel. Thank you guys so much. Peace. Solidarity.